that looks pretty good so far, except I really want that head to continue rotating downward. So I'm just going to tweak those a little bit, because the, the head is really kind of following the motion of the rest of the body. And then it's going to start recovering kind of right there. So then let's again try that uh, 2080. And then again the head is just a little bit weird so I want to I want to recover a little more quickly there. And then overshoot a little bit on the head. Oh, it didn't actually overshoot. Uh, so, but something we can do here is, uh, I like that pose, so I'm just going to get rid of those head frames. And uh, I'm going to have it overshoot, let's say, 20% from there to the final position. And then 70% in there. So then that just gives it a little bit. And then I want to uh, settle a little bit more from that head, uh, head nod or whatever. Then you can see it, it kind of comes to an abrupt stop there. So really what I want to do is move this over here and give another 70% there to ease into that head extreme. And then you can see the, the arm kind of comes up here and, well for one thing, the, the hand is out of whack. Let's move that hand in place. and it just kind of stops there. There's that big hand motion and then it just stops in place. So what I want to do is I want to do a little manual overshooting on that. And then over here, let's look at the in-between, I mean at the, the onion skinning. Just tweak that up a little bit. See how that looks. That hand is still kind of stopping there, so I'm going to tweak that some more. Just give it a little overlapping motion. And then there, it really stops hard because it's actually, I think it's actually overshooting a little bit. There we go. So then we end up just a simple raising the hand animation with with overshooting and and anticipation and overlapping motion and these are all really important uh, aspects to have in animation. Um, the, you know all that I would do really if if this is the motion that I want, which it, it looks pretty good. What I would do next is I would go in inside the head symbol and I would actually make the hair bounce around. See, I have the hair all as separate symbols. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but uh, it's something to consider for the future. So then we have, then I'm going to show you how the auto tweener works with raw shapes. So here we have a simple raw shape. This is just four vertices there, 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 and then. I uh, dragged the edges just with the black arrow. Something that you really have to be to be aware of when you're using the auto tweener, you can really only edit the symbols. The the sorry, you can only edit the raw shapes with the black arrow. So, so like dragging the corners and dragging the the curves. If you edit it with the white arrow, um, then bad stuff will happen. And I'll show you how exactly that works in a moment. First, I'm going to create a new keyframe. Oh, and uh, this right here, this is my sort of homemade shape hint. It's just a symbol that's called shape hint. You can see it right here. Um, and all it is is a location, basically. It's, it tells the auto tweener where corresponding corners are. <coughs> so in this instance, what I can do is I can uh, move this wherever I want, and then if I and then it's going to know, the auto tweener will know now, even though this corner is now closer to this one in the original, 
it's going to know that this one corresponds to this one because the shape hint is there. So it, looks, it works very similarly with the shape hints uh, that Flash uses. Um, the big difference here is that it only supports one shape hint at the moment, and th that's something that I may uh, expand on in the future. But for the moment, it basically says my shape starts here, and all subsequent sh shapes also need to start there, where where the shape hint is pointing. It doesn't have to be exactly on the vertex; it just has to be near it. Um, it's it's gonna say, you know, go off of this vertex that I'm closest to. Um, so now let's let's see what happens when I uh, when I shape tween this this uh, shape. I mean, when I auto tween this shape. So you can you can see it kind of shrank a little bit, um, and that's just because it's rotating. the The corners, the the vertices, all go between their initial location and the final location in in a line, in a straight line. So if you if you see like where that where each corner is, you can see that it's traveling in a straight line. Um, now uh, let's let's see what happens when we change the uh, position of the of the shape hint. And these on these I'm doing just a straight 50% auto tween. And so you can see there the shape hint got tweened as well because I, I chose to tween it. The, the the shape hint is on its own layer. It's on a guide layer. And uh, that's convenient because then when you when you uh, go out of the symbol, you don't see the shape hint. So uh, you can do the same sort of stuff on this uh, on this raw shape that you can do on the uh, symbols. You can do an anticipate. Let's go anticipate. So it really goes squish, and then overshoot. It goes way squish. And then uh, let's make that look like the other one did. Oops. Undo. Undo. OK. And then, so I did just did a 2080 there, just like I did before. And let's do another 2080 here. Twenty. 80. Oops. 80. So you can see it's, uh, you can get some really, uh, sort of poppy animation, some really, some really dynamic things going on with, with